Jonathan Barkan here with DreadCentral.com, and I'm here with Troy Ruptash and James Legro of Wildling. Gentlemen, how are the two of you doing? Doing well, thanks. Pretty good so far, yeah. Good so far, how's yeah. South By treating you? Uh, South By Southwest is a great festival, and the city of Austin is just, I think, in my opinion, the best city in Texas. Yeah? Yeah. It, it just stands out. It's To me it does, yeah. Keep Austin weird, and it yeah, really indeed, brings you yeah. in. Yeah, for sure. Austin's a special, special place. Gotcha. So let's start at the beginning. If you can each tell me just a little bit about what it was about the Wildling script and your characters that drew you in. Uh, for me, I think there was something about the small town aspect, and especially a small town that has a secret. Right. I found fascinating. That's good. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, the story and Fritz and the character of Roger... You know, again, someone living with a secret and a dark secret. It's always intriguing. Uh, yeah, I, th I think it was uh, the sort of the, myth the mythology of the story of uh, enlightenment and then transformation through enlightenment. That's, that's what hooked me in. All right. Now, uh, James, your character is quite strange in sure. of himself in a way he's almost as uh foreign as anna is you know he lives on the outskirts he's he got his own mythology can you talk a bit about the relationship between the characters and your relationship with the other people in this town well you know i guess he's uh he he he's kind of a shaman like figure and i think his function is to uh act as a spirit guide for the young woman and take her from the world of men into this other world. And does he really believe that this is her place or has he seen that she is trying to be a part of this normal world and it's just not really uh, working? You know, I think uh, in terms of conclusions he's drawing, I, I, think, I think he sees where everything is going but he also has to wait for the time in which you can take them to where they need to be. And uh, Troy, you mentioned that your character harbors a dark secret, and as a matter of fact, that this town itself definitely. is harboring these this history. Yeah, they tie uh, it together, definitely. Exactly. And can you go a bit more into that about how your character lives in this town, has a relationship with it, and yeah. what you know, pulls it all together. Yeah, definitely. I think there's something about Roger that, uh, you know, he's lived in this town his whole life and uh, doesn't really like change. And, uh, you know, I think he's threatened a lot. And he, whether he admits that or not, uh, but, you know, I think he's really threatened by uh, Ellen Cooper, Liv's character. You know, I think he'd like to be sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And I love that you said that he's afraid of change, and yet that's the fundamental foundation exactly. of this story. It's all about change. It's all about transformation. So in a way, even though Anna is this character that is in a brand new world that is that she's never been a part of, and she's undergoing some of the most radical transformations we've seen, your character is observing it and is so uncomfortable through all of it. That's a beautiful observation because I think that's what makes the movie so powerful. You have, like you say, the transformation, but the people who resist that. And, uh, yeah. And transformation is something that affects not only the person going through it, but those around. Mm -hmm. And so this dark secret has to change as well right. to accommodate right. such a situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, James, how does that change affect your character, the shaman-like persona? Well, I mean, it, it just, I think it's fulfilling his purpose, you know, so I don't, I don't know if it, it, it changes him so much as it, uh, it, it fulfills his, this calling that he's been drawn to. Now, in a way, each of you is a protector. Uh, is a protector of some aspect of this world that Anna has now become a part of, and she is almost a threatening force, but she's still a child. So how do you come to terms with who she is versus what she is? Well, I think for Roger, I don't know if he makes that any distinction between the two. He's just wanted to keep this at bay, and I think we'll do anything to have that happen. <laughs> and what are your thoughts? 
Ooh, I don't know if I have a very good answer for that very good question. <laughs> you know, I didn't really think about it in those terms. Uh, you know, I, I get back to his, he's a guide and he does what guides do. And sometimes you have to wait for your precious cargo. And I, you know, that, I think that's what he fulfills in the movie this conduit between these two worlds. Sure. So uh, obviously this is a film that is going to appeal to the horror audience, but it does have a more wide-reaching uh, appeal for other people. What is it that you think they're going to get out of watching this film? I would have no idea. I, I can't <laughs> even imagine what they would get. You know, that's such a subjective thing. And that's kind of the great thing about movies or books or art or music. and it. It, you know, there's sometimes similarities between how people respond, but people take away the most idiosyncratic things. Uh, I'm always surprised by what people remark on, so it's, that's a really hard call. Mm -hmm. What do you think, George? Uh, it's interesting because I've seen the film now a couple of times and I feel like each time something changes for me, but I think, because I feel like it is really universal, and, uh, but I think Anna's transformation, I was saying earlier how uh, I think it's really empowering for not only teenage girls, but just well, for sure. everyone. Yeah. yeah, that idea of yeah. the empowerment that comes from that. Now, what else is coming up for the both of you? What's next on your plates? Uh, I actually start working tomorrow with John Patrick Shanley, uh, developing some new plays he's working on. Wonderful. Well, immediately, I'm going to go help promote the other picture I have at South by Southwest, support the girls. And uh, I have some business to tend to in Los Angeles, and I'll go home. All right, wonderful. Now, uh, we asked Fritz, but I'd like to ask you as well, where can fans see this film? Uh, well, I know uh, it's opening in theaters and on demand uh, April 13th, I believe. Uh, starting off in New York and L.A. That's as much information as I have as well, yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? Have you already penned it in for your families so that they'll oh, yeah. get a copy? <laughs> yeah. Get yeah, out to I the theaters. So. I hope yeah. they see it soon. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. All right, Troy, James, thank you so much thank to you. the both of you, and best of luck. All thank right. you. Appreciate Cheers. it. All right. Thank Excellent. you, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much for checking out this interview. We want to thank our sponsors, Dark Sky Films, Shudder, and Epic Pictures for their support. Also, a big thanks go out to South by Southwest Convention for having us here. To subscribe to our channel for amazing content, go ahead and click right here. To follow all of our South by Southwest coverage, you want to follow this playlist. To see amazing exclusive horror clips, click here. And make sure to get the very best in horror news by going to dreadcentral.com. Thank you so much.